All right, Israel, let's get it. Shalom. First of all, giving all praises and glory to our mighty Abba. So this lesson is going to be a hard power pack revealer. It's going to validate the complexion of our people from dark skin to brown skin people. And it's going to validate a lot of other things where we truly came from. So get ready, Israel, because the heathens are quickly losing their kingdom and they can no longer hide the truth from us. All right, let's go ahead and get a validation and a confirmation for that. The book of Mark chapter four and verse 22 says, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. So in other words, everything that the heathens tried, so-called tried to hide from us, is coming to the light. There is nothing that they can keep secret that would not come to the light. And that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing a lot of this, a lot of these truths coming to the light. And one of the biggest ones is who our people really are. And getting back to the heritage of our forefathers and keeping of the laws. They cannot stop it. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. Now, when you look at this map, this is the world map that so-called heathens put together. Now, this is what we know so far as we know it, all right? Now, we know that there's a lot more to this, but that's being revealed as well. But just for edification purpose, when we look at what we've been taught as what is the whole world or the earth, the different continents and everything, I want to prove to you and I'm going to show you which sons of Noah spread to the four corners of the earth. I want you to really pay attention to this because this is going to validate a lot of things. All right. So for those of you who are saying that, yes, there were black people in America way before Columbus, you are absolutely right. There were black people, dark people all over the continents, all over the earth before any so-called white man or non-melanated person came on the scene. But let's get the facts. Let's get the validation of which sons of Noah was scattered to the four corners. Now, this is this is going to be interesting. You've probably seen this before, but you haven't seen it like this. So pay attention. All right, go ahead and turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 9, and we're going to start with verse 18. And it says, And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. Now, I want you to go down to verse 19, because this is going to be the kicker. Now, remember, this was in the beginning. This was shortly after the flood. All right. It says that, verse 19, these are the three sons. It didn't say four. It says, these are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. Now, Israel, notice what it's saying here. It's not saying part of the earth. It's not saying they were scattered to a third part of the earth or a fourth part of the earth. You see it as well as I do. It says that these are the three sons of Noah and of them was the whole earth overspread. Did y'all get that, Israel? So that, this, that means that thousands of years, thousands of years before anyone any so-called white person came on the scene. Black folks were already scattered to the four corners of the earth, but it gets even interesting. The Most High's word does not lie or comes back void. Right? Everything that is written in the scripture is prophetic and has came to fruition. All right? and a lot of it is still to be revealed. But this is amazing because when you look at the different continents, on this earth. That means that you had a little of Shem, a little of Ham, and a little of Japheth scattered everywhere. So that means Israel, the continent, what they call North America, thousands of years ago, had a little bit of Shem, 
and a mixture of Ham and Japheth. So you had all of three sons of Noah scattered everywhere. All right. When you look at the ancient Asiatic tribes and everything, they were dark skinned people everywhere. Europe, everywhere. All right. So these non-melanated people, wherever they came from, was a laboratory invention. All right. These people were not created by the most high. That could be, you know, in the fact to prove that this whole earth was all melanated people. That has been proven scientifically and historically. You cannot debunk that. Even the heathens will admit that at one time the whole earth was black. Now, if someone were to ask the question, all right, seed of Israel, so from what you're saying, that means that we had Shem living in the Americas thousands of years ago, shortly after the flood. You're absolutely right. We had some Ham living in the Americas as well as Javit. But here's the kicker, Israel. Now, this title is named for a reason. Follow the bloodline. All right. Even though Israel came from the line of Shem. But you got to understand that the bloodline did not start until Abraham's seed came on the scene. That's a big difference. So when you look at thousands of years of the three sons of Noah being scattered to the four corners of the earth, and you're looking at Shem being scattered all over the four corners of the earth thousands of years ago. But here's, here's the thing. They were not of the chosen seed line. They were just part of the group that scattered thousands of years ago, Israel. And that was thousands of years before Abraham came on the scene. You got to understand that. Now, it starts with the bloodline. And I'm going to show you that. But before I get into that, they were scattered again. Everybody was scattered to the face of the earth again. I'm going to show you exactly where it says that. At. So not only did it happen once, shortly after the flood or right after the flood. All right. You saw it with your own eyes. All three sons of Noah were scattered or dispersed to the whole earth. It said the whole earth, not part of the earth. All right. So right there, that validates that black folks were everywhere, everywhere on the continents. All right. And remember, it wasn't until Abraham came on the scene that the chosen bloodline began with Isaac then Jacob, then the 12 tribes, all the way to us, which we are now scattered to the four corners. And I'm going to show you how the Most High prepared the way and allowed all the indigenous people to be wiped out in order to make the path for, unbelievable, our captivity. But before I show you that, I'm going to show you where the people scattered again to the four corners of the earth. So now let's go ahead and go to Genesis chapter 11. Go to Genesis chapter 11. And we're going to start with verse 6. And it says, And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. Now let me pause right there. Now even after the flood, it was still the same thing. They were always one until this very moment. All right. And it says, And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. All right, now these people are one, these people are one language. And Israel, again, this is before Abraham came on the scene. This is just a little over a thousand years after the flood. Now, we already read and proved that right after the flood, they were scattered. All three uh, all, uh, three of Noah's sons were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Now, here it is again, a thousand years later. Look what's happening. All right, verse 7, it says, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. All right, and let's look at verse 8. So, Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. All 
all the earth. Israel, we cannot make this stuff up. This actually happened. They were scattered to the four corners twice. Once after the flood, and again a thousand years, a thousand years later, right during the Tower of Babel, right when they were trying to, trying to build this huge, tall infrastructure, trying to reach the heavens. The Most High stopped them in their tracks, and He scattered them to all the face of the earth. And again, it didn't say to a third part of the earth. It didn't say a fourth part. It said to all of the earth. So they were scattered again. So Israel, you got to understand the implications here now, okay? Now, all of this happened before Abraham came on the scene. So again, you have a mixture of Noah's sons and descendants and descendants of descendants being scattered to what is already a populated earth from the flood. Because again, the first time they were scattered, they were scattered thousands of years ago. This was the first scattering as written in biblical history, all right, right after the flood. So that means that there were people already in America, Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, all over. Ain't nobody, ain't no white man discovered these lands, Israel. People were already on these lands. There were black people all over. Every single, what you, what, what you call race of people that today that looks, all these non-melanated people, they were black people. They were black people. They, the Asi the Asianics, all them folks were black people. And I'm going to show you some clips to, to prove that. And this would explain why and how all the indigenous people, the descendants of the three sons of Noah, and their descendants and descendants after them were dark-skinned to brown people. These were the people that were already here thousands of years ago, shortly after the flood, and again, right after the building of the Tower of Babel, all right, when the Most High put a stop to them. So Israel, this is what the heathens don't want you to know. They want you to believe that this world was a Caucasoid world. They want you to believe that the non-melanated people were the first ones on the earth. Nothing to be further from the truth. These people, these non-melanated people were invented. They were not created by the Most High, all right? Anything that was not created by the Most High must be destroyed. It's unnatural. It's like different species that were not created by the Most High, but by man and bred it and genetically modified like the dog. We know that the original dogs were the wolf and the fox, but then you look at all these different breeds that man has created. Prime example. But Israel, when you look at these indigenous people, these were the people that were already here way before the non-melanated people came on the scene. But now I'm going to show you how these people were wiped out, how the dark people, how these dark skinned indigenous people were wiped out all over the earth. This is going to blow your mind. All right, Israel, if you have not seen this movie, it's like a documentary too, but if you have not seen this movie, it's called Rabbit Proof Fence. It's been out for many years. I would highly encourage you to get this movie. And let me tell you why, because it is, so it's, it is so profound. It shows you how they used a method called casting. When the Brits came on the scene, when they saw all those indigenous Australians I mean, they saw these dark-skinned people. They were like, man, we got we to gotta do something about that. So they started this technique called casting. And what they would do is they would breed out the first generations of the indigenous Australians, all right? And by the third generation, they were pretty much completely non-melanated, all right? So that's why when you look at a lot of these Australians today and you see all these white Australians, that's because a lot of the indigenous people were bred out. They were whitewashed. Not only did this take place in Australia, but this took place all over the earth, Israel. This is just a concept of what they were doing in Australia, but this was applied to the whole earth. And that's why when you look at when you look at Asia, when you look at China and these other different continents and everything, those people were black at one time. All right, but the same technique that they used in Revit Proof Fence, that's why you gotta get this movie. You gotta watch it so you can be educated. So you can see how they did that stuff because it doesn't take long. All it takes is 
a couple of generations to wipe out a race. This is this is crazy, Israel. So all the generations of the sons of Noah that were scattered to the four corners of the earth and their descendants were pretty much wiped completely off the face of the earth through whitewashing and through casting. Same thing with the uh, indigenous black Native Americans, all right, which was also a mixture of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They were also wiped out and washed out. Whatever diseases uh, that that these folks didn't die from, they were washed. They were white. They were white. Uh, they were uh, whitewashed out. They were whited out. Now, Israel, why am I saying what? Why am I saying all this? Because I'm trying to get you to look at the big picture here. Because the Most High is preparing a way. Because when the Most High, when we came on the scene and through our uh, throughout the bloodline through the twelve tribes of Israel, the Most High made sure that there would be no mistake that when we came over here in captivity, that we would not be mixed in with the indigenous people that were already here. And that's why I truly believe the Most High allowed them to be wiped out because they were not of the chosen bloodline, all right? They were just people that were here right after the flood and shortly after the Tower of Babel. This is powerful, Israel, because the Most High made sure that he would distinguish us from the indigenous people. Not saying that we, yeah, we are indigenous, Israel, but listen to what I'm saying. We're indigenous to the fact that because we are part of the chosen bloodline Israel. Yes, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were here way before anybody came on the scene. But because we're from Shem, we're from the chosen bloodline until Abraham came on the scene. So that's the big difference, Israel. So to say that Shem and Ham and Japheth was over here, that, that is correct. You know, nobody would be lying, all right, because they were. They was just the people who came before, prior, thousand of years ago, but the chosen seed is what matters, Israel. Why do you think the Most High allowed all these indigenous people to be wiped out? If that was the case, if we were them, these indigenous people will still be here. So check out this, check out this movie, y'all, Rabbit Proof Fence. If you have not seen it, go check it out. It will educate you. You'll be shocked. You'll be like, wow, that's how they did it. That's how they whitewashed all the indigenous people. I mean, this stuff is crazy, Israel. All right, Israel, get ready, because we already know the storyline and how Israel came on the scene. We know it was Abraham, the promise, then Isaac, then Jacob, which was renamed Israel. Israel, go read it, Israel. Jacob was named Israel, which, which spawned the 12 tribes of Israel. Then they would end up going to Egypt to live with Joseph and then from there they would go into captivity and to Egypt because you know Pharaoh was like hey they, they increasing the numbers I mean man this this is a beautiful storyline as well now we and here we are you know we're there in, in Egypt until uh, Moses comes on the scene and his people you know leave Egypt we all leave Egypt our forefathers leave Egypt and then we uh, wander in the wilderness for 40 years all right then we finally go into the promised land and we begin our journey and we start our kingdom, our kingdom, our kingdomship, King David, all them boys and everything, go in captivity again, get back on the throne and go back in captivity again. <laughs> but uh, the last time, you know, it's like, OK, the Most High says enough is enough. I'm going to put you in captivity for good this time until I deliver you, until I deliver you. All right. And just just write this scripture down. Uh, Deuteronomy 4, 27, 28. And he already says that I will scatter you to the four. He says, I will, uh, you will be few left in number and I will scatter you to the four corners of the earth. And that's exactly what he did, Israel. Oh, Deuteronomy 28, 68. I will, you know, I will see you on ships. I will, you know, put you in captivity on ships again. So Israel, there is no, it's, it's no fickle. You know, we are the chosen people. We are the chosen bloodline. But you know what's really amazing though, is that, Prior to us coming here to all the Americas and, and all the parts of the world, majority collectively, all the indigenous people were pretty much wiped off the face of the earth. Yeah, you still had indigenous people, but they were not as many when we came on the scene, when we went into captivity during the transatlantic slave trade and the Arab slave trade. 
it's, it's powerful, Israel. The Most High knows how to keep us separate from everybody else. If you don't believe that, if you don't believe that the Most High knows how to keep us separate from all of the indigenous people that were already here, or from anybody else, then something's wrong if you don't believe that, because that's exactly how the Most High kept us separate. He prepared the way. He allowed all these people to be washed, uh, to be uh, whitewashed out, to be whited out, to make the way for his chosen people, even though we were coming into captivity. I know it sounds crazy, doesn't it? I mean, this stuff sounds like a nightmare and a fairy tale at the same time. I mean, Israel, this this stuff is crazy how the, this, how the Most High works with his people, even though, you know, he kicked our butts and spanked us because we were being wicked. But at the same time, he's still preserving us. Even, even through captivity, he has preserved our people. Now that, that is powerful. And so that way we, he made sure that we would not be confused with the indigenous people that were already here. And again, by the time we came on the scene, majority of, majority of them were already wiped out. And now you got these so-called $5 Caucasian Indians that are talking about their Indians and stuff like that. They have no idea because the, all the indigenous people on this earth before the chosen seed came in captivity, all these indigenous people were dark-skinned people to brown-skinned people. So Israel, don't be fooled. This is what the heathen nations do not want you to know. And our people are currently scattered to the four corners of the earth. Unfortunately, a lot of our people are caught up in all different types of religions, just like Deuteronomy 4, 27 and 28 said they would. They would worship these Elohim, these other gods, in wood and stone because they don't know no better. That's what they're taught. We were the same way, Israel. We were, they put a white Jesus in front of us and told us to worship. That's all we knew. We They put a church and told us to, you got to go to church and give money and all that stuff. That's all our people ever knew. They put these hella days in front of us. That's all we knew growing up. Now it's time to come out of all that. There should be no reason why any of our people should be even attempting to keep these hella days. And I just wished our people would just wake up and come out of these Christian sanity churches. And you know, these churches would shut down overnight if that happened. Overnight. They wouldn't know what to do. But our people, unfortunately, are so gullible and want to cling to everything and will fight you for it. Unfortunately, many of our people are going to have to be destroyed. And I hate to see that, but we all know that that's what's going to happen. But let's get into some more historical facts, Israel, because let's talk about Let's talk about the space and the time that our people left Jerusalem unto this present day, because I got some clips I want to show you. Now, we know that our people left Jerusalem around 70 AD, fleeing, like the Most High said, like the Hamashiach said, fleeing to the mountains, and they, a lot of them fled into Africa, which was known as an area called Negro Land. And you can look that up. There's a book on that where the white settlers saw that how they were living and they wrote in their diaries that they were keeping the laws all right this was prior to the to the arab slave trade back in the early 700s so israel this is the truth that the world does not want you to know all right our people have always been keeping the law you've always had a group of people that's been keeping the laws no matter what not all israel was corrupt. All right. Unfortunately, we had to suffer. You know, the good had to suffer with the bad. And you know, mass punishment. The Most High punish us as a whole, Israel. But yet, He's going to save us as a whole. He's going to bring us out of captivity as a whole. So you better believe that. And guess what? We had to suffer for the sakes of our forefathers, and the heathens are going to suffer for the deeds of their forefathers because of the wrong. The wrong, all the wrongs have not been righted out. And so it's still open season up in this piece. So you better believe we're going to see a lot more destruction. And like I said before, we've already seen the fall of America with the Chinese currency. So Israel, the Most High knows what he's doing and he knows how to avenge his people. And he's not done with these people yet. So you may be asking yourself the question, 
after Israel, the so-called Negroes, left Jerusalem or fled from Jerusalem in 70 AD for their lives, well, who occupied Jerusalem, that old area, during the time it was vacant? Who were over there? There had to be somebody just wandering around in the land. It wasn't empty. I can carry, I can tell you that. It was not, Jerusalem was not empty. And not all the Israelites fled Israel. I mean, there were some that stayed back, that managed to hide out, and what have you, through their generations. So it's interesting, I, I find it interesting how history leaves this part out. They don't show you who occupied the Holy Land. They don't show you who were there while the, Israel, while the real Israelites were scattered and fled to Africa and everything, you know, from persecution and all that stuff. But they don't show you that because you're talking about from 70 AD until roughly um, to the ninth or to the late 1930s. I can guarantee you those Khazars wasn't over there. They didn't come on the scene until like 1948 when they came over there to claim that they were us. Going to come to Jerusalem, talking about we're proclaiming our land, we're proclaiming the promise, and you got these folks over there talking about they us. No, Israel, the Most High is getting ready to reveal some truth. You know, I find it interesting that no one talks about from the time that Israel left Jerusalem in 70 AD until like the early 1900s. Nobody ever talked about who occupied Jerusalem in that area in North Africa. It's amazing. Now, I'll put up some clips and I've been doing some research and I'm pulling up more and more. But if you look at some of these old clips. Now, this was a clip back in the late um, 1800s, like 1890, uh, in the late 1890s. And when you look at this clip, you see an old clip of what Jerusalem was back in 1889. Now, you can already tell that these are Ishmael's people, but this also validates that the fact that the Middle East during that time and prior were all dark skin to brown skin people in complexion. It wasn't even called the Middle East back in the day. You know, it was part of that whole um, uh, metropolitan of uh, Mesopotamia. So Israel, this is what they don't want us to know. And this is something that they constantly hide from our people and from the world. Because they don't want you to know that what was once, what, what is now called the Middle East, there were all black dark skin to dark skin to brown skin people that were occupying the Middle East. All right, they don't want you to know that. Now just imagine in the late, I mean in the late 1800 they discovered this. Just imagine what it was like 2,000 years ago. Imagine what it was like 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. You know, you had our people, Afros and their braids and cornrows and whatever, you know, they had. I mean, man, I mean, it was a beautiful thing. This is the kind of history they've been trying to hide from us for so long. And again, you know, like I read earlier in Mark, there's nothing hid that will be hid. All of this, all of this is coming to the light. And it's amazing, even back in the in the late 1800s, you know, even the Ishmael's people, like with dark skin to brown skin people. You can't make this up, Israel. You know, and somebody occupied Jerusalem in North Africa during the space of 71, I mean, 70 AD, until a lot of people were gone, all up until the late 1800s, the early 1900s, until these Khazars came over there claiming to be us. But it's, it's just amazing, you know, how you see history revealing itself and everything. So, you know, and like I said, I researched and I put up some more clips as well, and I'm going to show you some other clips. Now, I'm not saying that none of our people were over in Jerusalem during the late 1800s, because again, not all our people fled in 70 AD. So yeah, I believe that you had, still you had Israel mixed in with some of the Ishmaelites that were over there occupying Jerusalem, all right? Because some of the clips I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see, you're gonna see dark skin to brown skin people that look just like us during the late 1800s. I mean, it's pretty amazing. They definitely won't tell you this history in your churches or the history books 
they left this completely void and they did not talk about who occupied they did not show you who occupied Jerusalem during after Israel left in 70 AD until the late 1800s all right Israel I'm going to show you another clip from the late 1800s to the early 1900s of the people who occupied North Africa and Jerusalem so check this out we're going to come back and get into it some more Pretty mind-blowing, huh? Now, did y'all notice when they showed the Welling Wall that all you saw was dark to brown-skinned people? Notice you didn't see these crazy-looking Khazars with these silly-looking hats bobbing their heads back and forth. See, this is the stuff they don't want you to see, Israel. They don't want you to know that what we, what we call the Middle East was consisted of all dark to brown skin people in complexion. Now you may say, well, why does skin color matter? Well, it matters because this is something that they've been trying to hide from us for a long time because they, they do not want you to know that Israel current day and past are Negroes and are still black. They were black back then and are still black today. And I'm going to prove to you that that image matters to them because it matters so much that they would even try to blot out the images, any historic images they would try to blot out of us. I can prove that to you. In the book of Maccabees, 1 Maccabees chapter 3, in verse 48, it says, And laid open the sefer of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So what is that telling you? 
that's telling you that every single image of our people have been whitewashed and replaced with white faces. Yes, Israel, replaced with white faces. And you can see that even unto this very day. I mean, look at this madness, Israel. Look at this stuff. And they whitewashed everything. They know good and well Moshe was not no white man. You know what I'm saying? They, they know this. But see, this is their MO. This is their technique. This is how they do it. Imagery is power. And this is why they wiped our imagery out the history books and put their imagery in there so that we could worship them. So don't let anyone ever tell you that complexion don't matter. It does matter because they work so hard to keep our complexion hidden throughout history. So that ought to tell you something, Israel. That ought to let you know, that ought to validate how important you really are. That's why it really behooves our people to really study their history. Study your history, Israel. Know where you came from. If you have an American, you live in America and you have an American name, more than likely you was on some man's plantation, all right, your forefathers. It don't matter where you were scattered to, it was always custom. Anytime we went into captivity, we took on the names of our slave masters. For example, you live in America, you have an American name. If your last name is Jones, Clark, Wilson, whatever, look up those plantations, look up the Clark plantation, look up the Jones plantation, look up the Willis plantation. You will see it, Israel. There is no way that you claim, that some of you claim to be indigenous people, that you've never been on slave ships, that you've never been in slavery, but yet, how in the world did you get American names? Answer me that. How did you get the names of your captives? How did you get the name of your enemies? Because you got some people that are saying we never came over here on slave ships, but yet they walking around here with American names. Explain that one to me. Then if you were never in slavery, then you should have your original name still attached to your history unto this present day. The scriptures are clear, Israel. The Most High allowed all these indigenous native people that were, that were scattered to the four corners of the earth from Noah's son thousands of years ago to be pretty much collectively completely wiped out before the chosen seed came into captivity over in these Americas and to the four corners of the earth. You see how precise, you see how perfect the Most High's strategy is, Israel? There could be no mistake, there can be no confusion who the true bloodline, the chosen bloodline of Israel is. All right, just remember that. Remember that the Most High was the one who brought us into captivity, not ourselves, not our enemies. The Most High delivered us into captivity. And as he has delivered us into captivity, guess what? He is going to bring us out of captivity with a very powerful, strong hand. You know, the scriptures are full of validations and confirmations. Let's go with Ezekiel chapter 20 and start with verse 34. And it says, and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. It's talking about us, Israel, because where are we right now? We are scattered to the four corners of the earth with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. I'm not talking about that kind of plea where, hey, I'm asking you to be good and all that. No, no, Israel, it's gonna be just like it was when our people came out of the land of Egypt. It says, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Israel, so will I plead with you, says, Adonai, Yahweh. Verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of the covenant because the Most High's covenant has never been broken. We broke the covenant by breaking his laws, by being wicked, by being stiff-necked. So now we have to go through this process all over again 
because we don't want to do right. Verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels. What's a rebel? Anybody who is anti-law, against the Most High's laws, commandments, and statutes. That, those are the rebels. You look at these Christian churches, those are rebels. The people who are in those Christian churches, they are rebels. Why? Because they hate the Most High's laws. They will fight you. They will fight unto the death to keep these pagan holidays and to keep these heathens ways. All right. So he goes on to say, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country wherein they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Yasharel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh. So the Most High is not playing Israel. If you think this is a game, keep on, keep on wallowing in your wicked ways. Keep on going to these churches and believing these pastor pork chops and taking their word for word. And if they keep on being wicked, obeying the ways of man and their traditions, then they're going to see where exactly where it's going to get them. Now, Israel, it's not hard to search out our history. You know, the great thing about our history and these heathens is the fact that they document everything. And when I say they document everything, they document everything. So you know the old saying, if you want to hide anything from a black man, hide it in a book. All right, all you got to do is go look up the slave trade archives. You'll see they have the ships number, they have the names, you'll see they had Hebrew names before, you know, before they were captured and everything. It's all there. You just have to do a little digging, Israel. You just have to really take the effort and do the research, but it's out there, it's, it's written because again, they document everything. So really, there's no excuse. There's not gonna be any excuse when the Most High really brings us to judgment. There's not gonna be any, any excuse to why you did not search out your heritage and your history. Why were you not seeking to keep my laws, commandments, and statutes? There's not gonna be no excuse, Israel. Look around you. you you're seeing towns and, and little cities being destroyed, destroyed, just by tornadoes alone. We're not talking about any other disaster. We're just talking about tornadoes alone. I've seen a whole town wiped off the map, killed black folks and white folks, especially our people. So Israel, you know, game time has been over. It's been over. It's been over hundreds of years ago, actually thousands of years ago. But our people still want to play these games. And, you know, I'm afraid that it's going to be too late for many of our people because they don't want to change their ways. They want to continue to be rebels and rebels they will be. But then they will be destroyed like a rebel. So I just want to leave you with this, Israel. I pray that I know this was a mouthful, but I pray that you really dig deep into this and rewatch this lesson and really take it to heart, study it and warn our people. With that being said, I say shalom and stay strong.